Jackie and welcome to my channel. This video is all about how to sleep train a toddler who is bed sharing and still breastfeeding. Now bed sharing and breastfeeding go hand in hand. One issue that a lot of parents face is how to sleep train while still nurturing the breastfeeding relationship. Many mothers who choose to nurse want to nurse as long as possible and even do extended breastfeeding when they nurse well into the toddler years. And unfortunately, a lot of the resources that you find online about how to help your toddler learn how to fall asleep on their own recommend weaning your toddler or sleep training your baby while they're still nursing or before you're ready to end the nursing relationship. Now, there is a way that you can sleep train your child, but it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of patience and you have to wait until your toddler is ready to start the process. And that's honestly the hardest part. The hardest part is being patient and waiting until your toddler is ready. This method is not meant for infants. And later on in the video, I'm going to go into a little bit of detail why I personally believe that sleep training an infant is not healthy developmentally or emotionally for them. And if you are able to, it is better for their mental health if you wait to start sleep training until they are actually ready for the process. Nursing mothers who bed share, and that's where your baby sleeps in your bed with you, have much more success at maintaining the breastfeeding relationship as long as possible. Nursing a baby and a toddler is really hard, and if you can bed share, then that means you don't have to wake up during the middle of the night, and your toddler or your baby is right there with you all night, and you can just nurse them on demand throughout the night when they need it. This does pose a challenge though when they start developing some independence, they're ready to fall asleep on their own or have a little bit more freedom. How do you continue nursing throughout the night on demand while giving them the opportunity to learn how to fall asleep on their own? And that is where the peaceful sleep training method comes in. If you feel like you're not ready to sleep train your toddler or they are crying or working themselves up into a panic when you try to do sleep training, then those are signals that it's not time yet and it's not right. So follow your gut, listen to your child's instincts. You'll know when the time is right. A misconception that a lot of people have is that sleep training is just the process of getting your kid to fall asleep on their own. But it is much more than that. Sleep training is a whole process. It starts with winding down, bedtime routines, falling asleep, and staying in bed. And I have a couple other videos about the sleep process in the description box below if you're interested in learning more. If one part of the process isn't working, the whole thing is likely to fall apart. If you have a solid bedtime routine, then it makes the process a whole lot easier and more predictable and safe for your toddler so that they are ready to have that independence when it's time. Now, peaceful sleep training is a little bit different than traditional methods of sleep training that you might find by doing some research online. Some methods you might be familiar with are the cry it out method, which is the Ferber method, the sleep lady shuffle, fading, the pick up, put down method, the chair method, and some others that you might find or you may have tried before. Some resources even recommend that you stop bed sharing or stop nursing so that you can sleep train your toddler or even sleep in an air mattress in a whole nother room while you are starting the sleep training process. And in my opinion, all of that is unnecessary if you wait until your toddler is ready. If you're forcing your toddler to sleep train or your baby to sleep train before they're ready, then those techniques might help you get your goal achieved. However, I believe that it is more important to nurture a child's mental health and nurture their emotional development than force them to sleep train before they're ready. Forcing a baby or a toddler to sleep train before they're ready puts unnecessary strain on your relationship with your child and puts unnecessary stress into your life and theirs. You'll find mixed opinions about the cry it out method specifically. And in my opinion, I believe the cry it out method is traumatic for a baby. When you put a baby in their room and they're left to cry it out, they don't learn how to self-soothe. All they're doing is giving up. They're crying and crying and nobody's coming to help. They end up just giving up. They don't learn how to self-soothe. They can't learn how to self-soothe unless somebody does it for them and teaches them how to do it. And they're not going to be ready until they're around two years old. Yes, the cry it out method works. Yes, you can get your babies to sleep on their own by using this method. However, the cost of that is damage to your baby's mental health. If you're feeling upset when you're trying to use these different methods of sleep training and your baby is crying and you are having a hard time with the way it sounds, those are signals that it's not right. You don't have to listen to the resources online that are telling you to sleep train at six months. 
it don't push it don't force it you don't have to agree or listen to the popular resources that you find when you feel like the time is right and you are ready to sleep train and your toddler is ready for it it will feel natural it will feel right and it will feel empowering a lot of resources also recommend to remove sleep associations and personally i don't agree with this because we all have sleep associations we get tired when we put our head on the pillow or when we pull up our favorite blanket. Some adults like me have a really hard time falling asleep anywhere else other than the place where they have their sleep associations and children are the same way. It does not make sense to remove comfort items from a child's area or to not give them things that bring them comfort and love so that they can fall asleep. Sleep associations are important and they're necessary and they're healthy. However, it's important while you're choosing sleep associations to choose ones that will be long-term and will last and that are empowering for your child. It is natural and it is healthy to rock your baby to sleep. It's natural and it's healthy to nurse your baby to sleep. It does more damage to your baby to withhold comfort and love to prevent a possible sleep association than to wean them off of their sleep association when the time comes and they're ready to learn how to fall asleep on their own without those crutch items. So to start the sleep training process, your toddler will let you know when they're ready. It could happen any time between one and a half to two and a half years. Some toddlers wait until they're three, three and a half. Other, other babies are ready earlier. It all depends on your child. The way to do the peaceful sleep training method if you are nursing and bed sharing, just to nurse your toddler the way you normally do at night and have been doing this whole time, and just pay attention to their cues. Some indications that they might be ready to start the process is wiggling around after they've done nursing, starting to play instead of falling asleep, looking for a toy to play with, pulling away from your breast, going back and forth between breasts, or just not falling asleep after an expected amount of time. Instead of waiting for them to fall asleep at your breast and waiting in the bedroom with them for a long time before, they're, before they finally fall asleep, this might be a signal that they're ready to try to sleep on their own. All you have to do is allow them to separate from your breast, explain to them that you're gonna leave the room, so that they can fall asleep on their own. Offer them a plushie or a blanket or some other comfort item that they can play with while they're getting ready to fall asleep and let them know you're gonna miss them and that you love them and what they can do if they need you. So if you have a baby monitor set up, this is a really great time to use it and tell them this is the baby monitor. If you need me, you can call my name and I will come back up to you. Because you also want to make sure that your toddler is not getting out of their bed. So offer them a way to reach out to you if they need to so they don't have to get out of bed to find you if they need you. And I have a whole video about how to help your toddler stay in bed in the description box below. And then after you've done all that, calmly leave the room. And sometimes they might get upset as you're leaving and that's okay. And they will stop crying as soon as you go to them and explain again what is happening. You can refer to the four steps to emotional regulation. I have another link to that below if you're interested as well. And that helps them understand, identify, validate, and understand where their feelings are coming from and how to navigate them so that they can get through those big emotions that they're feeling as you're trying to leave the room. I recommend at this stage, if you have a baby monitor that has a microphone, that is a really great tool to use so that you can communicate to your toddler through the microphone instead of going back into the room where they might expect that you would start nursing again. This way you can sing them a song through the microphone or talk them down from periods of upset and say, you can do this, you got this, you can go to sleep on your own, you're a big kid now, you can do this and just really encourage them to fall asleep. It can cause a toddler a lot of anxiety if you tell them that this is the last time you're coming in the room or if you use punishments or rewards to try to get them to fall asleep on their own. All you need to do is encourage them, believe in them, and support them while they're learning a new skill. Now, this process does not result in a magically sleep-trained toddler overnight. It takes time. It could take a couple months before your toddler is fully sleep-trained. There are going to be days where your toddler is totally fine going to sleep on their own, and other days where they want you to stay in there until they fall asleep, and this is normal and this is healthy. Over time, they will become more confident in their ability to fall asleep on their own, knowing that you will always be there to support them and help teach them how to fall asleep without you. 
You are not removing their comfort. You're not removing their safety. You're making sure that's satisfied by still nursing them before you leave. All you're doing is shifting and giving them a little bit of space to create some independence while still being safe within the breastfeeding relationship. When your toddler is ready to wean and end the nursing relationship, then the process of getting them to fall asleep without nursing will be easier at that point as well. Now, as babies and toddlers go through different growth spurts, they have periods of time where they could experience nightmares, growing pains, teething, restlessness, anxiety, difficulty falling asleep, and it gets really difficult during these periods of growth spurts. This is normal, and during these times, your child wants to seek you out more and wants to be more attached. And these are the times where you might feel like you want to sleep train because you need a little bit of space, you need a breather, because it gets really suffocating sometimes when your toddler is latched onto all day and all night. There is a resource called The Wonder Weeks, and this book explains all the different growth spurts that babies and toddlers experience that are predictable and age-linked. So you can check out that book if you're interested in navigating the growth spurts in a healthy and empowering way. Essentially, during growth spurts, their brains are changing rapidly and their world is changing and they need you to be their anchor. They need you to be their support and they need you to be stable. And these are the times when it's more important than ever to stick to the bedtime routine that you've already established and do not sleep train during sleep regressions because it makes it a whole lot harder for your baby or for your toddler to get through the growth spurt if you're also changing their sleep routines. During these times, have patience and maybe hire a babysitter or get some support if you can because having that extra support during the day will make the nights a lot easier to handle. Peaceful sleep training is also about testing boundaries and, and limits. You want to figure out where is the limit to when you go into the room to help them. You don't want to set a firm boundary on never going in after a certain point because that's not fair for a toddler who has a nightmare. And also you don't want your boundaries to be so fluid that you go in every time and your toddler never has the chance to learn how to handle upset on their own. Find a balance with what you're comfortable with and follow their lead. They will let you know when they need you and they will let you know how you can support them while they're learning this new skill. I hope that this was helpful. I wish you peace, love, health, and joy.